Uh, welcome back to uh, the grand final preview slash prelim final wrap here at the Flogsville Podcast. Uh, I've got three coaches joining me. Uh, we're going to start with Coach of the Guns and Rosies, Mr. 119. Ben, how are you, mate? Good evening, Commissioner. Yes, I'm well. Thank you. Uh, yeah, exciting. But uh, yeah, we're not here to talk about ranks. We're here to talk about the grand final. So uh, yeah, exciting to get into it. Ah, oh, very good, mate. And joining him, we've got Coach of the Rabbitohs, Daniel. Hello, mate. Hello, Scott. It's uh, fantastic to be here for the grand final edition. I'm, I'm glad to hear Ben say we're not here talking about ranks because I think mine slid out to about 30,000 after knocking me a fuck the last two weeks. But uh, <laughs> it's great to be here, mate. <laughs> oh, very good. And joining us, boys, we've got, of course, Coach of Armour Cray. You've done it again. A podcast debut, a fellow grand final grand finalist after a, a stellar season, just his second season in the comp. Sam, welcome. Thanks, Scott. Uh, pleasure to be here, actually. I'm really looking forward to it. Beautiful, mate. Uh, love to get your insight on all things fantasy and your season. Uh, and, and, of course, as we look ahead to the weekend, which is exciting times all round. Well, boys, let's start with, we usually do pick of the week. And I reckon... Uh, it, it, it must be said that the Guns and Rosies, I think, despite being eliminated, we're gonna we're gonna put the spotlight on you, Ben, and we're just gonna give you a bit of air time because you deserve it, mate. One nineteen uh, with a twenty four thirty seven, a massive score uh, in the round uh, uh, has propelled you right back into that hat mix, mate. Uh, talk us through some of your moves because your trades paid off big time. Yeah, yeah, reasonable week. Um, I think realistically, having Lockie, the likes of Lockie Neal and, and Laird and um, a few guys who didn't have go well um, really helped. But um, yeah, having took Miller as a vice captaincy, um, yeah, a little bit of hectic last, last minute sort of thoughts about about that one. Um, but yeah, having him as a, a unique vice captain um, in comparison to, as we'll get to, you know, the likes of Brayshaw and, and Laird as captain options and um, yeah, trading out Jack Crisp. Um, as he's highly owned. So, yeah, uh, good week. Uh, unfortunately, a week too late for this competition. Um, <laughs> rolled this one out last week against Brad, but, uh, yeah, not to be. So, yeah, hanging around the mark and hopefully, uh, yeah, it's a, a big week to come. Well, yeah, we'll uh, <clears throat> keep trucking it over the weekend, mate. It's an exciting time for you in the hat chase. All right, boys, well, let's jump straight into it. Uh, let's talk about the prelim finals. And Sam, you had a fantastic win uh, against your good friend, uh, Brad, the Burp and Burp Burtons. Uh, let's talk about this one, mate. Talk us through what worked for your boys in the prelim. Yeah, I think it was actually just getting rid of the uh, Lockie. Uh, got rid of him on the was it Friday night. I can't actually remember which night it was, but uh, giving him the boot. And when I saw he only got 60, I was uh, licking my lips and was really counting my chickens, really. So... I got excited, um, but bringing Petrarca, he just did nothing, to be completely honest. Um, and then it just came down to, yeah, Saturday night. We had a, I had Oliver, and I'll captain him, and he went um, racial, and he was just pretty useless, to be completely honest with you. And other than that, uh, easy win. So it got me through to the final and wiped out Brad. So I was laughing with it. I was really happy. <laughs> Ah, oh, very good, mate. Uh, what what else did you boys see, Ben and Rabs, in this matchup? Uh, well, I think the captaincy choice, uh, as as has just been discussed, has, has been pretty crucial. Um, Oliver, you know, with a I'd say a solid captaincy score, not an amazing one, but solid enough, and, and particularly so when you you look at what Brayshaw um, has delivered there. Probably quite an interesting matchup though, because no real. Um, outstanding pods, probably more a tale of, of which pods didn't quite get the job done. And I think you hit the nail on the head there, Sam, with uh, the likes of Neil and also Dacos with the 65. Mm. Um, mm. Some coaches have, have rolled the gauntlet. We're holding him as a, a bit of a primo, who obviously started as a rookie and and probably uh, yeah suffered a little bit from that on the weekend. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting this week, as we'll touch on later for you, Sam, with blokes like Petrarca and, and Merritt and Chris um, and, and seeing how they'll bounce back and whether they're Still on your side, but um, yeah, obviously very pleasing to to make the grand final. Yeah, I think you both beautifully nailed it. As we've got a, a addition to the podcast as well for the grand <laughs> final, um, as you yeah, may have noticed. But yeah, for, for Brad, um, having three of the six of his uniques having you know tags next to him was always going to be a, a concern. 
Um, but to, yeah, to only go down by 68, um, I think it was a little bit, uh, you know, more stressful than uh, Sam's letting on. I think it could have been a lot tighter than this. So, um, you know, different captaincy choice and yeah, the, it's a totally different game. So, um, but yeah, Brad obviously had a great second half of the year and um, yeah, great accomplishment for the prelim and um, yeah, it was every chance. So uh, congratulations out to him. But uh, yeah, also to our man on the, on the show tonight. Yeah, absolutely. Brad, with an outstanding second half, as you said, um, and we predicted this really, that he would be one of those danger teams going into the finals. Uh, we don't get a lot wrong here on the Floxville podcast. Uh, let's move on uh, to, oh, this was a, a fascinating real battle uh, that was quite close in the end due to some some very below par scores from both teams, really. And it was the Sisterhoods putting up a decent score, um, but my boys just getting the job done. Uh, what did you see here, guys, in this one? I, I saw, or I would imagine, a very stressful weekend. I believe uh, two two of the three coaches in Mildura over the weekend, uh, so a bit of interstate travel for this matchup. Um, but yeah, no no doubt on the on the dog and bone making the trades, uh, Scotty. I, I know you're uh, yeah making some late decisions. So um, yeah, it's uh, on, you know watching Connor Rosie limp around for the first half wouldn't have been great viewing for yourself, Scotty. Um, needing what was it, 94 or something like that to, to get you home and, um, yeah, a bit of junk time at the end against the depleted or whatever you want to use, Bombers, um, certainly helped. So, um, yeah, another one from that fifth to eighth range, um, Bulldogs of 2016 sort of stuff from yourself, Scotty, and knocking off the sisterhoods who have been mighty impressive. So, um, has to be noted, another excellent capacity choice in, in Sam Doherty. Um, they don't often miss the hoods and, um, yeah, got another one right, but unfortunately, the end of the road for him. Yeah, it was always going to be a tight matchup. And, um, yeah, it certainly proved to be the case. So I think, yeah, Rosie, I don't know how you're feeling, Scott, going into that match, but 94 for Rosie. We were talking about it before the pod. Um, not necessarily the most reliable 94 you're ever going to get, but, um, yeah, really pulled the trigger when he needed to against uh, a team that is in disarray, it would be fair <laughs> to say, after. Um, and uh, yeah, I guess on the sisterhood side, similar to what was mentioned before, Dacos really stands out with the 65. Walsh um, receiving a bit of attention, and uh, and Trelaw as well with that you know below 80 score probably probably hurting them. But yeah, very tight matchup considering um, you know you've got the job done with Brayshaw and Petrarca as pods there. So you've got to be got to be happy with that. I would have thought. Yeah, it certainly was a, a tough matchup and. Uh, yeah, congratulations to the Sisterhoods on a on a wonderful season. Uh, top four finish in their first season of not only in this league but in AFL fantasy is, is quite an achievement. So uh, they, they were they were shattered to uh, to go through that. Luckily, I didn't have to watch uh, Connor Rosie because we were driving back from Mildura. Um, I was a little bit concerned after his first quarter, and then uh, seeing the score at halftime uh, that that was that was nice also. But uh, yeah, a really tight matchup. I suppose on my side, uh, taking a few risks, going Lockie Neal to Aaron Hall uh, paid off, which was which was what I was hoping for. And then, yeah, Tommy Stewart sort of limped to 90. Um, I was tossing up, as Ben will, will well know, between him and Himmelberg. And then uh, I fell into the uh, the Twitter trap looking at uh, looking at some pictures from the game and him warming up with the Fords. And I, I sort of, yeah, I pulled the trigger when I probably shouldn't have. Uh, which yeah cost me thirty points, but that's okay. We we still got a win um, in the end, and yeah, happy to take Doc as the VC um, because yeah, Sunday I, I probably would have gone Callum Mills, so that was that was a decision um, to be made whether I, I I take Doc and then just back Rosie and Heaney, knowing that Dacos uh, will cop some attention. So that worked out, and yeah, great to be back uh, in the grand final. Certainly not what I um, would have thought. Five, five or six weeks ago, that's for sure, boys. Uh, sorry, I just got a question. How has it gone down with the sisterhoods? Obviously, we know uh, the coaches of these two franchises are very close uh, in, in friendship or relationship. How has it gone down on uh, the personal level? No, it's gone. It's oh, Yeah, obviously, Sunday w- was tough. It was a bit of sadness from the sisterhoods. Um, <clears throat> they were quite flat. Um, but then sort of Sunday night uh, and since then have been uh, very supportive and uh, uh, thinking about their trades too as well this week, which is a good sign. They're not completely throwing the towel in. They're pretty keen to 
finish inside the top 5,000, which is a pretty damn good effort first up. So, no, they've been uh, a little bit flat, but uh, no, very supportive and uh, will be cheering me on, no doubt, which is which is great. Um, let's move on to the consolidation finals, boys, because we're obligated to talk about it. Uh, it was the highly fancy phenomenal getting the job, uh, losing, sorry, losing to the Keys. The Keys won. Uh, they got through. <laughs> Uh, talk us through this one, boys. Uh, how did the Keys pull off this upset? Always uh, fascinating viewing the consolation or consolidation consultation oh. finals, uh, Scott. But, um, yeah, big surprise, as we mentioned before, the uh, the Keys getting the job done over Phenomenal. Fair to say Phenomenal quite outspoken uh, in previous weeks about certain performances that have been coming to the table and uh, expectations of uh, victories in in this uh, in this final, so uh, to lose would clearly be a disappointing result. And, and I can't help but notice that um, he's not here to, uh, to front <laughs> up to the media, which is which is disappointing. So uh, for Jake on the other side, uh, an unexpected win and uh, a great opportunity for him to claim some silverware. It, it, I yeah, not real silverware, but you know, metaphoric ones. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. good for Jake. <laughs> Yes, uh, we, we probably will take the silverware away for this discussion. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's captaincy, really, to answer your question, Scotty. Uh, Andrew Brayshaw for Fenno and Callum mm. Mills for Jake, and that's the gap. That's the ball game. Sixty odd points difference there. So um, yeah, it's quite ironic how it works out sometimes, as you mentioned, Rabs. But um, yeah, well done to Jake. A lot of unique players, I can tell. Bloody hell! Cool. And uh, and Jake would obviously be looking for a better performance from uh, one of his marquee men in in Ben Keys, but mm. you never know. Big big game coming out this weekend, big showdown. He might be able to pull out the goods and uh, and be the keys to success this week. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nicely said, Rabs. Uh, let's uh, let's move on to the other uh, consolation final. So I'm glad I got that one right. Uh, as predicted, Smith Scripps with an easy win. Uh, over the B-Sharps boys, Liam versus uh, Jake. We'll get into that. But for Liam, uh, again, a, a solid score. Um, uh, what went well for him just quickly before we get stuck into the grand finals? Everything went well, it looks like, um, except Captain Brayshaw again. But, um, yeah, look, I think Liam just has one of the best teams still going, which is uh, unfortunate for him. But he's... Um, Still playing off for a final and should be going all right, I reckon. Yeah, just uh, just another grand final for, for the Crips who in his franchise, as we've alluded to on here, has made quite a few and won quite a few, so he knows what it takes at this time. Um, but, yeah, for Dale, uh, having Tim Taranto on field um, just sort of sums up I think, where, where it's – potentially where the focus is. I don't think we need to spend too much time on it, unfortunately. Uh, very good. Well, boys, let's get stuck in uh, to our grand final preview. We'll preview the big one uh, between myself and Sam, and then we'll preview Jake and Liam uh, very quickly, but we'll give them some time. Uh, let's go through it, boys, because there's there's some pods there um, and some really interesting matchups this week, a little bit like Brad last week. Um, there's a couple on my side who uh, have some potential tags coming uh, it would seem this week, uh, plus some unpredictable players in Aaron Hall and Connor Rosie and Isaac Heaney. So uh, it, could, it could be anything on my side. And then uh, on Sam's side, you've got the quality of Clayton Oliver. Uh, my nemesis is, or well, two nemesis, is it nemesis? Nemesis. Uh, and Will Brody and Jack McRae, would you believe it? Um, and then you've got Laird, who's, who's great. Uh, and then uh, big Darcy Cameron there we, we might start with uh sam do you want to sort of talk through um i don't know how do we preview like just just give us some thoughts on the weekend mate i reckon i reckon uh yeah you're on um it's just possible tags on your side like you mentioned um i'm looking on my phone so if you see me looking down i couldn't work it out on the computer um yeah like you said rosie heaney god knows what you're going to get out of them you could whip out a 50 or you could get 100 so I think it will come down to them, and it depends if you want to trade some Bra a Brayshaw or a Sinclair or something like that. Uh, a bit concerned about Aaron Hall, 
Mm. So it's, uh, it's in my mind to either match him or do something along those lines, but I'm not going to give you all the hints. Um, and then on my side, it's just, yeah, I don't even know, to be honest. I think Will Brody will still do pretty well. Um, McRae's always a worry at the moment. And you got you got my lad in the Oliver, so I'm feeling confident going in, but that doesn't really mean much at all, as we all know in fantasy. So, oh, very good, mate. All right, uh, Ben and Rabs, uh, you boys want to provide a few thoughts on what you think is going to happen here? Uh, yes, always interesting. You know, grand final matchups, probably a pretty standard sort of number of pods. I would have thought around the sort of five six ballpark, which. Um, is always good. So there is a bit of variance uh, in what we're looking at. I I think Sam sort of spot on. I, I really think the matchup is probably going to hinge more on your side, Scott, um, whether that be good or bad. Um, and I, <clears throat> and that's obviously what we're going to find out. But I, I do agree that I think Rosie and Heaney, um, you know, loom large in, in terms of which way they go. Um, and also then looking at Brayshaw, Sinclair, um, you know, yeah, how much attention those players are going to receive from various opponents is, is hard to gauge and obviously hard to gauge what you're going to do at the trade table as well. Um, on Sam's side, I think most of those guys who are pods, probably with the exception of McRae at the moment, are, are pretty solid and consistent. So, yeah, I think it's going to be a really hard matchup to pick. Um, I, yeah, I think a lot of it might come down to captaincy choice. If I had to choose, I, I think I'd probably lean towards Sam, but only because of that consistency factor. Mm-hmm. But um, I, I really think it's it's very much a 50-50 matchup, but it's going to come down to those guys for you, Scott, who are a bit more uh, up and down, I think. You um, you mentioned a 50-50 matchup um, here, Rams. Is there, are there any odds? From, from <laughs> Rams? You obviously haven't been uh, involved in this one, so uh, what's what's happening there, please? No, no, um, yeah, no, no odds for this matchup. Um, unfortunately, uh, Rab's bet just ran into a few financial difficulties at the end of <laughs> last season, and uh, uh, yes, gone a bit of a cropper this season. So hopefully, Rab's bet might make a return next season, Ben. But no, I don't want to uh, influence the pundits for a grand final when there's been no odds for the season. We'll just let them make up their own minds. Okay, is there any uh, Norm Smith odds or anything like that? <laughs> just no markets at all. No, no, the uh, business is shut down, mate. <laughs> <laughs> no, very good. Um, I think, yeah, just Rabs, you do, sum, summed it up beautifully. I think just uh, there's not much cash to play with, as I've just looked at, as I'm sure you both have looked at. So, um, and I don't think there's many injury concerns or anything like that. So I think it affords, yeah, both coaches to be quite aggressive at the selection table. And um, I think those who, yeah, are brave will, will come out on top. So, I would probably have to back Sam at the moment, just based on those pods and what we've alluded to. But um, yeah, you never know in a granny. So, oh, very good, boys. Very good. Uh, not much else I want to add, really. It's just going to be, yeah, the, those players, whether I yeah, try and move them in fear of tag or, or I try and uh, maybe move an Isaac Heaney or um, someone, even a, a Jack Crisp, who's been you know underperforming this second half of the year. Um, I'll, that'll sort of determine itself, but uh, yeah, captaincy choice is going to be huge because I think it'll be fairly close, um, this week. So yeah, it's an exciting time, that's for sure. Um, and and good luck to Sam and looking very much looking forward to keeping track of all the scores over the weekend. Um, let's get into uh, the consolation final, boys, and let's have a bit of a deep dive into this one, uh, with the keys and. Smith Scripps going head to head. The key's the real underdog here. Uh, Liam's been fantastic. One of the one of the yeah unlucky sides not to make the eight, um, but has scored pretty well, boys. Let's have a look at some uniques because no doubt there's there's a lot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there is there is almost half the team, which is extraordinary, really, at this time of year. Um, a whole heap could happen here. There's there's some. Really one-sided matchups in terms of Jake's got three Melbourne players and uh, unique Sydney players as well, I think. So um, those matchups will obviously be key. But, yeah, I think you'd have to favour the Crips um, just based on their stepping up the season and the fact that he's been here before and done it. So, Yeah, Crips. Uh, Fenno is not going to like this. Crips definitely the best team outside the eight and uh, <laughs> they will prove that this weekend. <laughs> 
yeah, Crips all the way. Can't see him losing this one. Um, yeah, Helmet might do all right, but we'll see. Friday night might be it. Yeah, we tend to agree, unfortunately, for Jake. Um, yeah, maybe Witsy up against Goldie um, might go well. And then, yeah, um, the Helmet, like you said, um, Sam will, should go pretty well. But his man, Ben Keys is, yeah, since that role change, has really struggled. But the showdown, they might throw him back on the ball. Uh, we'll wait and see. And then those Sydney boys up against St Kilda in the last game uh, should, be, should be some nice viewing there. And that, that just about does it, boys. Uh, has anyone else got anything to add or shall we uh, wrap this one up? Have we got a – maybe we should do a ranking prediction for Ben? Oh, yeah. yes. I love I that. that. Uh, uh, I'm, you go. Oh, sorry, you go, Scott. No, uh, I'm, I'm predicting 99. That's my prediction. Oh. <laughs> 78, I reckon. 78. Yeah, oh, very he's going to have a real good one. Nah, excellent. I'm going to go 92, I reckon. That would look nice, number 92. Um, I reckon any hat would look good on that head, mate. That's true. That is very true. I'll, say, I'll, t- I'll take I'll take all any of those. Um, yeah, 34 points is the difference. So I think it's about 100 points to 78, which you said, Sam. So, yeah. But there might be some polls flicked out of the Fogsley community later this week with potential options we, we, we might, might try to get. <laughs> Get some involved. So, yes. Uh, <laughs> thanks for the thanks for the uh, vote of confidence. Would have uh, would have loved the over and under ranking prediction for Rosebet, but not, not to me. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, no, thank you very much. No, very good, boys. Well, best best of luck, Sam. Uh, enjoy the weekend um, and the showdown in particular, because yeah, Laird and Rosie going. Going head to head will be quite interesting viewing, mates. And um, yeah, congratulations on your season and and all the best for the weekend. Thanks, mate. You too. Um, yeah, I think the last game, what Sydney versus St Kilda, I reckon you've got a few of them. So I might be putting the dressing gown on and uh, watching that game at home. I reckon. So enjoy. Just just a last quick question here for you, there, Scotty. A bit more media tax here, but I believe you. Yeah, going over to Melbourne for the for the grand final, grand final parade, or something of that nature. What's the what's the go there? No, nah, purely uh, a family trip to Melbourne, mate. Uh, unfortunately, won't uh, be able to go to any games, and then flying back Sunday afternoon. So I'll be in the dark uh, during Carlton Collingwood, and then the start of uh, Sydney St Kilda. So that'll be very interesting. As soon as the plane lands, I'll be. Uh, quick to get on and and check what's going on. That's for sure. But uh, yeah, it'll, it'll be good to. Head to Melbourne and, yeah, see, see how we go. But sad to miss the showdown. I think that'll be a really nice game with Robbie Gray finishing up. And, yeah, just, uh, yeah, a, a good weekend of footy ahead, I think. Uh, All right. That's it, boys. Well, good luck. Uh, we probably oh, – we might join you next week. We'll see how we go. Who knows? We'll, yeah, we might do a review uh, for the sake of it. But, uh, yeah, we'll go from there. So, good luck and go well. See ya.